people how are you doing uh this is jemi naftali on the pediatric world i welcome you back to my youtube channel uh this is uh the channel remember that talks about it's all about kids welfare medical problems and also uh finding solutions so i welcome you back to my youtube channel welcome to this episode and here we create the awareness we create the awareness uh, we want people mothers the caregivers to have the know-how on the common illnesses that affect children while growing up and here we talk in a language that everybody is able to understand that is why we want to be as as layman as possible here so that everybody is able to understand so if you're new join the family and welcome so in today's episode today's episode uh we are going to tackle a very very sensitive uh topic and this is about conversions in children conversions in children this is very very common and it is very very serious so uh let's go together let's learn together so conversions in children so in other words other names of conversions are seizures uh, we can also call them feats and maybe in layman we can call them tremors the shaking when the babies shake these are the conversions these are the seizures they are the feats so then what are conversions conversions are common manifestations of illnesses and this causes great distress and this is to both the caregivers and also to the health care workers so imagine in these conversions everybody here is affected it causes a great distress to both whoever is taking care of this a child the professional caregivers and also uh the caregivers so this is very very serious so these ones are manifestations like we have said are manifestations of illnesses so uh maybe what are types of conversions that we have in children so number one we have something we call generalized tonic clonic conversions or seizures so from the word general so generalized meaning uh, every part of the body is uh, involved so when the baby is conversing they shake both the upper limbs the upper limbs are the the hands and also the lower limbs the lower limbs now are the feet so the baby shakes both hands and also the feet so these are what we are calling generalized tonic clonic seizures or conversions so that is number one uh, another one we call it uh, absence seizures absence seizures from the word absent these are very tricky they're very tricky why because you might not be able to see or to notice that the baby is conversing and in the reality they are they are conversing because the baby will just be there seated and just gazing looking at one position uh sometimes you may you may see the the, the, the eyes blinking other times they just gaze and that time the child is conversing imagine they are conversing and you might not notice if you are not so so keen so these ones we call them absence seizures um another one we call febrile convulsions from the word fever that's what a febrile comes from fever so what are febrile convulsions these are the commonest they are the most common that we we we, we find and uh, here it is the fever the hotness of the body the fever that precedes uh, the conversion so there has to be hotness of the body for the convulsions to be there so that is why we are calling them febrile convulsions so the baby gets high temperatures 38 degrees celsius from 38 degrees and above so 38 39 40 now the baby starts conversing so we are saying it is the fever the hotness of the body precedes the conversions it comes before the conversions come and we are saying they're the most common and the age that is usually affected here is the age of uh, six months, six months to six years. So when a child comes, they are between this uh, uh, age age group, six months to six years. And it is the, the, the mother tells you that the baby starts by having fevers and then they start conversing. Now, these are febrile conversions. So those are the, the common ones that we have. Yeah, the types of uh, uh, conversions. So now, um, 
when the mothers bring these babies to hospitals when they are convulsing, what are the questions that we as the professional caregivers ask? We ask questions so that they may lead us, we, be, we may be able, it, they, may be guide, they may guide us in managing these convulsions. So for example, what do we ask? The important questions. Um, uh, what part of the body was involved when the baby was convulsing? Like we have seen the generalized, for example, involving all the parts of the body, the upper limbs and also the lower limbs. So we want to know what part was involved. Uh, other questions we ask are the duration, very, very important. How long did this conversion take? So the mother might tell you that the conversion took three minutes, five minutes, ten minutes. And this is very, very important to us. So that is why we ask whenever a baby is brought in with convulsions. Other questions we want to know, how many convulsions did this baby have in the last 24 hours? Uh, during the day, how many convulsions? Three, four, five. Very, very important. I'm saying this one guides us in managing these children. Um, other questions we may ask the history of travel to malaria endemic zone. So thereafter, we shall see the common illnesses that are involved with convulsions. And one of it is malaria. Most probably when the child has malaria, they, they are going to converse. So that's what you want, why we want to know the history of travel to malaria endemic zone. And these are places like western regions. Uh, coastal regions, those are the malaria endemic zones. So that is why we are asking if the child, and this is if the child has traveled for the last two weeks. So this one is going to guide us and we try now thinking about malaria. Um, we also want to know if there is any history of convulsions in the family. Maybe it is in the family if there was another sibling that had convulsions while growing up. We really want to know so this is another very important question that we ask uh, another one is things we call pre aura aura and also post aura pre aura is before the baby convulses how does this baby behave aura is during convulsions how what happened in between when the child was convulsing post aura is after the conversions and these are things like did the baby pass urine or stool this is very important. Did they pass stool while conversing or after conversing or before? Uh, we want to know if these babies were rolling the eyes. Was the tongue protruded outside? Was there uh, any drawing of saliva? Did this uh, baby uh, lose consciousness during convulsions? Again, very, very important. So then those are some of the questions that we ask whenever a baby is convulsing. Um, I hope we are together and now from here having known this now let's go to what are the differential diagnosis of conversions this one means what this means that what are the conditions remember we say conversions are common manifestations of illnesses so what are the example of these uh, illnesses that are going to present with convulsions. So number one, like we said, it is malaria. So number one that comes into your mind whenever a child is convulsing is malaria. That's why remember in the history, we want to take and ask the mom if there was a history of travel. I hope now this one makes sense. So another illnesses that is associated with convulsions, we have meningitis, very, very common. This is the inflammation of the meninges and eventually the baby is going to convulse. So, and we are going maybe to have a topic on meningitis. Um, another cause of conversion, we have hypoglycemia. Remember, low blood sugars. So whenever the, the sugars of the babies are down, the child is going to converse. Again, we are going to have a session on this hypoglycemia. Remember, we said it's a killer and we really want to know how it comes about and how to manage it. So whenever there is hypoglycemia, whenever there is a low blood sugars, the babies are going to convulse. Um, other causes of conversions, we have electrolyte imbalances. So these are the, uh, the body, the salts in the body. We have the sodium, the potassium, the chloride. Normally there should be, they should balance. But if there is imbalances, then, then this child, we are going to see that, uh, 
the child is going to converse. So what we do, we send to the lab for things we call UECs, urea, electrolyte, and yes, and uh, all that, so that we are able to see the levels, the levels of these salts in the body, which one is down and which one and what is really causing these conversions. Um, others are blood infections. We call them uh, bacteremia. The child is eventually going to converse. We also have things like brain tumors. If there are tumors in the brain, this is it. The child is going to converse. Other things are, are things like hydrocephalus. Hydrocephalus, we mentioned it somewhere. If there is, uh, the head is uh, unpropor unproportionally larger than the rest of the body. So these are some of the illnesses. These are some of the uh, differential, we call them differential diagnosis. So whenever a baby is I mean, to hospital with conversions, we have to do lab works uh, leading us to all these infections that we have talked about so that we know we are able to know which is which, which one is really causing these conversions. So this is it, my people. Uh, now we have known, uh, we have knowledge on conversions and how they come about, why it is important to ask some of these questions. And we shall continue from here in our next episode. We shall continue from here and we are going to see how to treat, how the approach that we, we use uh, while treating these conversions. It is very, very important. They are common. Conversions are common. Uh, no day that goes by uh, without having children with conversions. They come to hospital. Mothers are so worried about these conversions. So that's why we want to know, to have at least the knowledge. We want to involve the caregivers into the managing these babies. So that's why we are talking about all this. Thank you for listening to me. Uh, thank you for staying tuned. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit on the subscribe button, that red button. If you haven't, if you're watching and you have not subscribed, please hit on it, subscribe. Uh, turn on your notifications so that you are able to know every time I post a new video. And like I told you, there's a video every Wednesday for you. So turn on those notifications so that you are able to be notified whenever I post a new video. Uh, also, uh, write a comment down there on the comment section. So you can even have uh, ask questions. You can lead me and tell me maybe what topic you feel we need to tackle. It is very, very important. Let's move together. Let's learn together. So thank you so, so much for staying tuned. Till next time. Bye. -bye.